So we're here today with Dennis Sovic, principal of Sovic Design Builders. And uh, Dennis, tell us where you're at with the project. Last time we checked in, it was about a week ago, and things have moved along quite a bit since then. Well, we built the ICF foundation, and then we came in before backfilling, framed the floor. So we framed the floor all the way across so we had good lateral stability before backfilling. So we totally framed the entire floor, and then the excavators came in and then backfilled the foundation. Um, that was done just last Saturday. And then yesterday they started framing and essentially started putting up walls and, and roof structures up on top. Um, they're doing a great job, too. I didn't want to get into your movie. <laughs> but you are. But I need so this anyway, these guys, we talked about doing advanced framing on this, and that's a technique in terms of uh, kind of deviating a little bit from standard framing on a house where you're using less wood for less resource and uh, more insulation. I love it. That's good. good All right. Okay. And so I'd like to show you a few techniques of advanced framing that's, that are done for increased uh, insulation and using less wood. Great. All right. So you're you're going to show us a couple of these advanced framing techniques. What have you got here? Well, besides uh, advanced framing, is just uh, building materials that are really in the green category, even though a lot of it is mainstream and used by a lot of different people. Like, for example, TJIs. Um, TGIs are uh, a type of floor joist that uses less wood, less dimensional wood, a lot of scrap wood in terms of putting it together. But structurally, um, actually can even be better than dimensional wood. Um, another thing, the same idea as orientated strand board, is a material that's used for sheathing, uh, floor sheathing as well as wall sheathing, which again uses more scrap materials and um, is you know kind of a green product and it's structurally it's just you know it's it's really good. Uh, in terms of framing techniques, though, first of all, we've got uh, instead of two by four, 16 inch on center for the structural walls, we got two by sixes on two foot centers. Um, and that way, we get thicker, thicker walls for more insulation, and we've less material because our spacing is much more. There's a couple other techniques that are really more in the advanced framing that we use. Instead of uh, what's done often is like a just a lot of wood where, uh, where walls intersect. And we do these two by four ladder blocks so we can get total insulation back behind there. And the electricians tend to love it too because they don't have to drill so many holes through there. So there's less wood used, more insulation again on that. So in corner framing, uh, what we'll do is use this kind of technique where we don't block out the entire corner, which can lead to less insulation, and more air infiltrations potentially. But we've got backing inside here for drywall or wall interior wall paneling. And on the exterior, backing for siding, because we'll be using a lap siding on this house. And plenty of room for insulation. Go ahead. Another advanced framing technique is to, um, to diminish the size of the header. That is, have the header just large enough that structurally um, it does its job. Because typically, they'll often build 2 by 12 headers and just push them all the way up to the to the, uh, to the top plate. So we've got a, a, a header that's at a smaller size, so we've got more room for insulation, less wood material, and this thing will eventually get blocked out with solid blue board insulation. So we'll have an insulated header that'll increase, uh, help the energy efficiency of the, the entire house. The advanced framing technique is to eliminate cripples that traditionally have held, held up the sills. We've got plenty of structure to hold up sills by eliminating the, uh, the two by that would be right in the corner here, and then conventionally they would tend to spread this out and put another two by here. We eliminate that. Again, more insulation and less wood being used. So, Dennis, you've mentioned a few times more room for insulation throughout the uh, house. What type of insulation are you planning on using? Well, the type of insulation we'll use here is uh, a blown in cellulose insulation that has a little glue binder in it. And the cellulose is uh, really a recycled product that's, you know, you could even read the newspaper. And the cellulose, and that'll fill up, and it has, does very well in terms of filling every little cavity behind electrical boxes and everything else. And performance and cost-wise, it's uh, it's really superior. We've used it for years with uh, great success. And um, do you have any kind of an idea right now? I know a lot of people kind of understand the idea of like R value. What R value is that going to have in your in your walls? I think the R value of the cellulose itself in a two by six wall is about R23, and then there's more materials that might be added on there, but it's roughly R23. But the effectiveness of the cellulose is more than just the R factor of a wall, because a typical fiberglass wall would be R19. 
but the cellulose is much more effective because it eliminates the air infiltration and there's no airflow going through it. And there's more to the story of uh, good insulation than just our value sometimes.